Welcome to the African Utility Week studio. Um, I am Denise and I'm the content manager for Ngerati.com. And in the studio with us today, we have Mr. Henpal Jamal. Uh, he is the former chairman of the Energy Regulatory Commission of Kenya um, and has an advisory role currently. Am I, am I right in saying that? Yes. Thank you so much for taking your time out of a busy schedule. Um, do you want to just expand a little bit on the presentation that you um, gave this morning? Well, I had been involved in several presentations the yes. last three or four days. Yeah. But my main thrust was planning. Yeah. Planning and how the project should be planned yeah. and executed. Yeah. So that's a basic problem for the most of the usual case. Yeah. And I uh, pointed out in the last uh, couple of sessions, including nuclear and so on and so forth, yeah. that first thing is we must plan before we start executing. Yeah. And the planning must be properly done. It should be based on realistic load load assumptions. Right. Yeah. Because if it is too low, then you run into problems of shortages. If it is too high, then you've got surpluses and somebody has got to pay for it. The second thing is we come out with very unrealistic or very optimistic scenarios for project completion. For example, we say we can put up a nuclear plant in four years when you haven't even started in four years right. and several other things. So, so set realistic target takes which yeah. you can achieve. Yeah. So you see, once the planning is over, then your implementation becomes much easier. Yeah, yeah. Our problem at the moment in all the African countries, we plan too much, <laughs> but we don't execute. And right. that's the main reason because our planning is poor. It's yeah. unrealistic planning. Yeah, yeah. And we should not go more than five to seven years. Mm. Plan for five years, complete it, get on to the next one. Are you talking about small projects rather than no, no, focus no, any, on small any, projects? Any, or any, any? See, five years yeah. is a normal span for planning. Yeah, yeah. Then Within that span of five years, whatever project you have taken, complete them. Yeah. Rather than jumping from one project to another one, complete them, go to the next one. Yeah. That's yeah. the best way of planning. Yeah. So that is what I tried to show them. And then I told them that the majority of us don't understand that the demand is not 100%, that if you've got 100 megawatts, you're using all 100. Yeah. It varies. Yeah. It varies from um, base load, for example, if your demand is, let's say, 4,000 megawatt, yeah. then 2,000 is what I call the base load, which is always there, even at night, the day, and so on and so forth. And that you should try and cover from all your renewable plants, all your coal power plants, all your nuclear plants, or whatever plants, which can run on a continuous on a base load station. Yeah. So that regime should be taken in country like ours. Yeah. It'll be in future, it will be all renewable energy, like geothermal, yeah. wind, will take care of that. Then your middle level, when you start your industry in the morning, yeah. your load starts going up. That is the period which I call the intermediate load. Yeah. And that should be absorbed by hydros, because hydros don't give you continuous 40% or more than 50% energy. Yeah. So you shut down your hydro, and you use all your hydro in the morning. At night, you store your energy in the yeah. reservoir. During the daytime, you use it to make your demand yeah. and peak. And the, the top five or 10%, you use expensive plant like gas turbines or something, yeah. because there you'd want to meet the demand, the capacity, but with very little energy. Yeah, yeah. That's all there is to the planning. Once yeah. you can do it, then you can interconnect with what we, Kenya, we, in East Africa, what we're going to do. Yeah. The base load can be taken care of by Kenya and Tanzania. Yeah. They have the gas, we have got geothermal and excellent wind yeah. sources. They can get it. You import power or you get it power hydro yeah. from Ethiopia and Uganda. And the top five to ten percent you use your thermal plant or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It is hundred percent reliable supply. You don't have to worry about shortage because the others are going to help you. And it will be the lowest possible cost. But the Countries must have a trust of each other. Yeah, Our yeah. biggest problem, we don't have a trust. We keep on talking, talking and talking, and we don't integrate. So that is what I my thrust of the things was in this thing. Yeah. So, but that is the project for the, but the country problem are different. And that is what probably I will 
discussed with you yeah, on the tariff and so on. Yeah, because we, we were talking about um, the, the fact that people just simply cannot afford electricity. Do you want to just expand on that? Because that's a major problem because there's yeah. all this planning going on, but I think you, you're telling me that um, people can't afford it. You see, affordability is a very relative term. Yeah. For example, I'm wearing an expensive suit, which may cost you whatever, yeah, 600, yeah. because they can afford it. Yeah. Somebody sitting there can't even afford a shirt. Yeah. The problem is not affordability. The problem is what is his income level yeah. to get whatever he or she wants. Yeah. But we seem to think that well, because if I can't afford, somebody else can't do it, and vice versa. For example, we have in our country, this is a very fundamental issue. Yes. You know, 45% of our people live below the poverty line. It's that means, yours in South Africa is about 27, I yeah. heard that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, those people, they have got an income level of roughly, as we say, about $100 per month for five people. I'm talking about the household wow. income. Yeah. About 20 to $30 is all they earn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, those are not in electricity. Even if you give them electricity, they, then you they say they can't, can't afford, afford it. Because their income levels are so, they can't even feed themselves. Yeah. What would be the percentage, you know, with that kind of income, what, what would be the percentage, you know, what, what would their utility bill be if they had to use electricity? Would that the, 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 the completely bill be, obliterate the I'm, I'm, I'm income? I'm going to the next segment, which is the lower yeah? middle class. Yeah. Their income level, they, those have, don't, don't have electricity, but if they did, they'll be using maximum 20 units. Right. If they use 20 units, a 20 unit will cost them about uh, $2. Yeah. That's all they'll cost you. Now, that obviously, they can afford. For example, I've got the figure right in front of you. Right. Of the people who are, we've got 37 percent people who are on supply in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yours might be 60 percent, I don't know. Yeah. But Sounds majority of the countries in Africa are ranging between 20 and 30 percent. Yeah. And we seem to be a bit higher. But of all the people that we supply, almost 60% of them yeah. use only 30 units per month. Right. And they can afford it because the income level allows them, but the bill never exceeds 1% of their income. Right. Then you bring the next middle class, mm -hmm. which is another 30%. Yeah. They use only 100 units per month. Right. Now their income levels are obviously higher. Yeah. But yeah. The, based on their income, they don't spend more than one and a half to two percent on their bill. So they can afford it. Right. People like me, mm. who belong to the upper middle class, the yeah. top five percent. I use an average of an all month between four and five hundred units per month. Right, that's quite a difference. Even my bill, because yeah. my income has to be much higher to sustain that, you know, yeah. is never more than two to two and a half percent of my, my income. The very top, the rich, the wealthy in this thing, their income levels are probably in the region of uh, $10,000 per month, yeah. the yeah. household income. Yeah. They use 1,500 units. Right. But they're only 1%. Even they can afford it. Yeah. There's a three percent. So the point I'm trying to make it yeah. the affordability is what your income levels are. Yeah, makes sense. So we we tend to be talking only on the cost side. I prefer to talk on the income side. You must increase, bring the people out of the poverty line, yeah. so that they can afford a little bit less goodies. They can buy bulbs and so. On. At the moment, they can't even afford a bulb. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I want to make it that seventy percent of our energy, primary energy comes from wood fuel and charcoal. Right. 20% comes from petroleum, yeah. and that is only for transportation. Less than 10% comes from electricity, geothermal and hydro. Interesting. So all those people who are spending only 30 units is only for a little bit of lighting and maybe a mobile and maybe a whatever it is, charging a mobile. All their energy cost of cooking and uh, heating are met by either wood or charcoal. 
So what are you proposing then? What is I the think solution what I'm, for, what for, the, for the network provider? I think provider. the politicians and everybody must understand the fundamental problems. Right. Rather than just looking at the side thing. And if you look at the fundamental problem, they give a lot of subsidy to the power sector and lots yeah. of other sectors. They should put that subsidy in the very basic thing. Improve the level on the wood fuel and charcoal because you can improve the efficiency of this thing by almost 50%. Yeah, yeah. Converting wood to charcoal, you can save 30% yeah. if yeah. you do it properly. Mm -hmm. Then using the proper stoves and cooker, uh, cookers, you save another 20 So yeah. you can do immediately 50 yeah. to 60% yeah. saving. Yeah. But the politicians don't like doing it. They'd ra rather give them the handouts. All right. And we all do that. Let's reduce it. Let them give a few goodies. Let's reduce the cost of their power, this thing. It's a lot more complex um, challenge, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, to upgrade your, upgrade your transmission because network. Because if you or... want to uplift the entire country, yeah. it has to start That's quite from a the very challenge. Yeah. It has to start from the cross. Yeah. So the problem is not the cost. The problem is the income. It's the income. It's on the other, on the and other side. And even if you give them free electricity, I can yeah. guarantee you that. They can't even afford bulbs, bulbs and uh, the appliances, and toasters. And so, on. so they'll sell you 20, 20 units per unit. Do you think that this uh, that this um, problem has been recognised and is going to be dealt with, or do you think this is I, a process that the government in, in has my, to go through? I don't know about your country. In my country, even these figures of 70 percent coming from this thing are not even published. Okay. These are based on various studies and sectors. They know about it, yeah, yeah. but it's not a public knowledge. So that is the fundamental thing you have to attack. Because the trouble is, they, the mamas, mama, you understand mamas, yeah, the, yeah, the women, yeah, yeah. they go out and fetch their yeah. wood on their head to feed their children. Yeah, yeah. So rather than worrying about getting the talk over this, they should get it cheaper. They will can easily, they should concentrate on tilling their land. Yeah, yeah. Giving the basic education to the children. Yeah. You improve the whole mass coming out of it. The trouble is that we technocrats, the decision makers, belong to the top 5%. Yeah. And we don't even know what is happening to the rest of the 90%. Yeah. That is the fundamental thing that well, this, should this is a this is a bigger problem for them. It you is. know, it's it's one thing to work on on a couple of strategies and a couple of yeah. um, energy goals, yeah. but I mean, we are talking economics, economic development. I mean, that that doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So, what is the solution then? Uh, should they be calling as a, as a, for, as for I've skills? Told you, building you, skills? You have to keep the, the yeah. cost on as a power engineer. Yeah. I must take care of that. Yeah. But. As, as, as a senior citizen of the country, and yep. hopefully a responsible citizen, we must attack the root cost as well. Yeah. yeah. Because if we don't attack the root cost, the, yeah. the then all these things will remain the same. Absolutely. We'll keep on talking, we'll have seminars, we'll have all sorts of things and happening. And plans, and plans that will so, never come to fruition. So, but yeah. but, but even, even the cost, as I said, our cost of electricity, I would like to very briefly. Yeah. The, our cover cost of electricity is around uh, 18 US cents. Yeah. Now, out of that, the generation cost is 12.5 US cents. Right. And 5.5, which you don't add it and the, we don't add, is the transmission distribution. Your municipalities, yeah. your ESCOM cost is maybe, I don't know, 8 US cents or something. But the municipalities have to charge this thing. Yeah. So your cost is. Still around 11 to 12 percent, 12 cent US cents, I would guess. Yeah. But everybody in the rest of the world thinks you are the lowest. It's costing you only four or five, six cents. Yeah. And then so on and so forth. Yeah. And I'm surprised that people were crying here for a high cost of electricity, where we pay about three times <laughs> what you guys do, or at least twice. Yeah. Okay. So, so Our rates are and the, the reason <laughs> we have saved the country yeah. because, and I think I can take some credit for that. All our fuel costs are passed through to the consumers. Yeah. We are the only country in the whole of Africa where all fuel costs are passed. Because we have no control on the hydro. Yeah. We have no control what is the price of the fuel oil that is coming from outside. Right. So therefore we say pass through. And we have managed very well. Within the next four years, all our fuel is going to be displaced by geothermal and wind. Right. In four years, there'll be no fuel for use, use for electricity except for operational use. Right. So right. our cost of the power is going to come down because we have got another natural resources to fill it. But you're still sitting with a problem uh, hmm? that you've still got that population, huge oh, population. That is, that, that is, this is the problem. 
Yeah, you're right. And they just cannot afford it. That, that, no, as I say, it's, the, yeah. I think this word afford has been very highly misused. Yeah, yeah. Afford by who? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to you, if I give you an expensive glass of wine, yeah. you can afford it. Mm, mm. I can't even afford, if I'm poor, even a bottle of water. Yeah. Yeah, so there's so, obviously... So my, to me, if my affordability for water use is very expensive. Exactly. That is what we should understand. We can't solve the problem sitting here in the next day. No. But what I do, we must be aware of these fundamental problems yeah. Yeah. before we start talking of the big things of a nuclear plant or this thing. Yeah. That you can take care of it. It's really just about the basics yeah. though, isn't it? To awareness of, of the, the basics. basic things that we keep yeah. on talking about. Exactly. Across the day. Well... So, think this, as I say, but yeah. one thing I want to share with you and this is across the board. Yeah. You know, I have got some figures of 10, 11, mm. 2010, 11. I've got figures for Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. Yeah, yeah. Now, the financial cost of Kenya was 16 US cents. Yeah. Uganda was 15 US cents. Yeah. Tanzania was 12 US cents. Rwanda was 22. Now you break it to the economic cost. Yeah. Now you can see the direct subsidies yeah. they all have. Ours was two US cents. Uganda was 10 US cents subsidy because all the fuel the government was paying for it to put it in the, in the grid. And they were paying 10 cents from the government kitty. Right. And Tanzania was clever. He says we don't have the money to spend, but they were load shedding left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. it, the, the cost of Load shedding was eight US cents. Yeah. So yeah. when you add the economic cost of these factors, ours became 18 US cents. Uganda was 25 US cents. Yeah. Tanzania was 22 US yeah. cents. Yeah. I think they Rwanda was the most responsible. Yeah. They, 22 cents was their basic cost, no subsidies, no load shedding. Yeah. And they were. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. And you are suffering from the load shedding. Yes, we certainly are. The cost are. of load shedding. That's huge. Whoever is listening to me. That's huge. Is about four times more. Yeah. Than the cost of supplying it. Yeah, yeah. And and so it is far better for you to supply at a higher cost. And I can tell you, all this gimmicks about not affordability is is not there. Yeah. It's created by the top guys, the politicians. It has got nothing to do with the reality of the situation. Right. If we as a poor country can afford 20 US yeah. cents, yeah. why you as a fairly rich country can't afford 10 US cents or 11 cents or 12 cents? Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. It's a perception created in our minds. Yeah, yeah. So take care of that. And I think all the problems on Africa, including the... You are the most developed country in the whole of Africa. You belong to the, the, that five to 6,000. Yeah. Uh, we belong to 1,200. There are others with 800 and so on. But we also drive it. Yeah, yeah. So understand the basic problem and take care. Don't, don't worry about what is happening in South Africa. Take care of what, Kenya, what is happening in Kenya. Yeah. Take care of your own. Yeah, exactly. I was exactly. talking to the yeah. nu nuclear fellows yesterday. Yeah. You, you guys can afford and you can absorb it to a yeah. thousand megawatt nuclear plant. Put it there. It's yeah. justified economically and everything. Yeah. But don't ask us with the demand of only 2,000 megawatt. Yeah. To, to start using a thousand meg of a nuclear plant. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is, um, you know, uh, it, it really is just fundamentals and focusing in on, on what your country needs yeah. and what, what your country is capable of. And thank you so much for, for joining pleasure. us. We could go on for hours. Oh, of course, I can. <laughs> and I'm sure we will connect again after this, just, you know, to delve further into, into these statistics. Yeah, well, whatever it is. Which are very yeah. interesting. And yeah. um, I hope our viewers um, found this as interesting as I certainly did. Yes. Um, and um, please note that we do have a, a number of other studio interviews um, on the Andrew website, so please do go and have a look at those. Thank you for joining us.